concavity in the second derivative test. Um, for this one, we want to find the intervals where it's concave up and concave down. So concave up is happy. So looking at the graph, where is our graph happy? Well, isn't it happy right here to that green dot right there? And then doesn't it change to kind of like partial frown? So for that first, where is it happy? And where is it concave down? Where is it sad? So the first interval goes from negative infinity, it's happy, to is that negative 2? It's right there. It's happy. And then from negative 2 to 0, does it look like it's frowning? So we got a negative. From negative 2 to 0, it looks like it's down. And then does it turn to be happy again, like partial, fr partial happiness? So that one, we're back to happy from 0 to 2. And then from 2 to infinity, is it sad again? From here to here, do you have a, a frown? So again, this is the intervals where it's happy. These are the intervals where it's sad, depending on the, the look of it. Think of it as a smiley face. What's it doing? Okay. Now, you could also do a whole bunch of other stuff with this graph. You could find maxes and mins and so forth. But this situation just wants to know about concavity. Number 16, it wants to know a point of inflections and discuss the concavity. So to find possible points of inflections, you take the second derivative and set it equal to 0. So what do you think? Do you think we should FOIL this out first? Would that be a lot easier than the product rule? Let's change this before we start to that. Good idea? Okay, so our first derivative <coughs> is 4x cubed minus 12x squared. Our second derivative, because that's what we're going to set equal to 0, has two little marks, by the way, derive this. Well, 3 times 4 is 12. Bring down the power of the exponent. And 2 times negative 12 is negative 24. And bring down the power, makes it a 1. And for a point of inflection, we set the second derivative equal to 0. Now, in order to solve this, you can use quadratic formula, but could you also just pull out a GCF? Hopefully you notice you get 12x comes out, leaving you what, x minus 2? So you now have 12x equals 0 and x minus 2 equals 0. That equals 0. And this one equals? Now, does that mean those are points of inflection? No, those are possible points of inflections. To tell if they actually are a point of inflection, you have to check to see if the concavity changes. If the concavity does not change, they're not points of inflection. They're important points. They're important points, but they're not for sure points of inflection. So how do we check to see if they actually change concavity? We make a table, kind of like with first derivatives. These are your intervals. So you go from negative infinity to 0, from 0 to 2, from 2 to infinity. But what are we going to plug in? We are going to plug it into which derivative? The second. So, f double prime, what's an easy number? Probably negative 1. In the first derivative, it would be negative 1. What do you get? 
Well, you get uh, what, 12 times negative 1 squared minus 24 times negative 1. That looks like a positive value. Remember, do you have to even worry about the actual value? No, you don't have to show it. You're just kind of like, that's good, positive. What does that mean about the graph? Happy or sad? He's a happy little guy. Okay, next one. What's a good value to plug in? One? We have 12 minus 24. Is that negative? So what's that tell us? He's sad. Okay. And the last one. You want to plug in what? Three probably. Smaller the better. So 12 times 3 squared minus 24 times 3. Well, that's going to be 9 times 12. And that's going to be like 72 or something. So probably positive. Looks like a positive value. So that means it's happy. OK. So our question is, these points right here, this is going to be 2 something. This is going to be 0 something. Are these points going to be points of inflections? Does the concavity change yes, yes. for both of these? Yes, so they are points of inflections. Now, if you went from positive to positive, you just, it's, it's not a point of inflection. How do you find that value? By the way, we said they're points of inflections. I kind of sometimes call it P of I. Is that easier than writing a big old word point of inflection? Okay, how do you find that number? Which equation do you plug it into? The original. Looks like zero. And then we plug in two to the original. And what, two to the 16 minus uh, four times eight, um, 32. The negative 16? So, these are your points of inflections. Remember, to plug it into the original, and points of inflections only exist where the concavity changes.